Hi everybody, my name is Andrea Feeney. I am the owner and founder of a small company called Boston Bakeology, um, and I'm also a home economics and family consumer science teacher for Hingham Public Schools. Um, I'm excited to be here today demonstrating, um, along with Age Friendly Boston, um, Old Ways and the Armenian Heritage Park. So thank you again for taking me back. This is my second year to do it. Um, and I'm going to change it up a little bit. So this year, instead of doing cooked, um, or instead of cooking, we are actually going to be baking. So uh, we will be starting out with uh, a whole wheat Irish brown bread or brown soda bread. Um, it's a very easy, quick recipe. Um, all in one bowl pretty much and it's a no need recipe so very very quick and easy. Um, as I'm working through the recipe I will hopefully talk to you a little bit about the ingredients, the difference of ingredients from the United States and Ireland and just what it was like for me to move here basically and just figure and navigate um, the baking and cooking world I guess. So I will start out with um, this recipe and then hopefully we'll also get to do some queen cakes or buns which is the Irish version of cupcakes and what I grew up eating for any birthday party I was ever at, any celebration, they were a staple in many many Irish homes. So we will start out with the soda bread, I have the recipe here beside me and as I said I'll be measuring as I go. So pretty straightforward, the first thing we do is measure all of our dry ingredients in this bowl. Um, we're starting out with whole wheat flour. So it is two cups of whole wheat flour. Um, and for this, as I'm doing it now, you could spoon in the ingredients into the cups, but I'll just quickly scoop as I go. It's a pretty, pretty quick recipe, like I said. Um, when I moved here first, or even, you know, if I was looking up recipes at home and figuring out recipes at home, um, we never used cups, we always used a weighing scale, so that was a big change for me. Um, you know, when I saw cups in a recipe, I would literally take a cup from the cabinet and start measuring using a cup, which obviously didn't yield very good results, so that was a big change. So it was two cups of wood flour, and I am on a cup and a fourth of oats. The next thing is a fourth a cup of, the recipe calls for flax seed meal, um, but you can do bran, you can do oat bran, wheat germ, um, wheat bran also works, and it's just a fourth a cup of that. Um, so, you need a cup of all-purpose flour. And I didn't mention, but I have a 12 week old on the ground in his dancer here beside me as well. So you might hear Frankie saying hi. And if he does, that's okay. So this is brown sugar. The recipe does have brown sugar in it. Um, but you can eat it, you can just use white sugar if you don't have brown sugar, or you can leave out the sugar altogether if you're on, you know, trying to restrict sugar in your diet for any reason. Um, it obviously tastes a little bit better with the sugar, but you know, whatever works. A pinch of salt. And baking soda, or as this is called in Ireland, bread soda, and the rest is two teaspoons. So I'm going to measure this and level it off. So we call baking soda, this is one of those ingredients that I said, you know, I had a hard time finding. So baking soda is called bread soda. And used for the same thing, it is the exact same. And this is the reason that um, the bread gets its name, so it's called soda bread because of the soda in it. And it's the raisin agent, so it works with the milk in this case, and it calls for buttermilk. I have three tablespoons of butter here. If you have curry gold butter, even better. Um, but usually when I'm baking, I'll just use regular, you know, real butter, but and I try and get organic, so if I have curry gold, I'll use that. Um, I'm going to use a pastry blender to cut in the butter. And again, in Ireland, we never used pastry blenders. This was something that I um, started using when I moved to the US of A and started teaching home ec. Um, so actually, if I was making this at home, I should probably show you that. What I would have done was use my fingers, and it's called the rubbing method. So you're basically just rubbing in, so lifting up above the bowl and rubbing in the butter, just until it's um, like smaller than pea size in your video is fine, or in your flour is fine. I'm not used to recording myself, so this is a whole new experience. 
Um, but yeah, we never use pastry blenders, and the re- the reason that they're used is actually to keep everything cold in a pastry or in a bread. So it was cold butter that I used, and my milk is just out of the fridge too. Um, and it just helps to incorporate them better when they're colder. So that's pretty much it. Everything is nicely mixed up together by either cutting them with the pastry blender or when you rub it in. So. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like. I don't know if you can see that or not. It literally just looks like a fine flour. And then because it has the oats that you can feel the oats. And you can do whole oats, rolled oats, any oats that you have work perfectly fine for this. I did put on my oven before I started. I set it to 350, um, which again is Fahrenheit. So if I was uh, making this back home, it would be at Celsius. And I think that was 180, but I'm not entirely sure. So the recipe calls for 500 milliliters of milk. And it actually calls for buttermilk. So that's two cups of buttermilk. So I do not have buttermilk on hand. I'm just using regular milk, which actually, if you look at the date, it is 7 4 20. So it's out of date currently. Um, but that's okay because if I have sour milk, I never ever throw it out. Again, it's probably another Irish thing. Um, I never throw it out. I always keep it and use it in bread. Um, and it's generally perfectly okay to use that in bread because you're putting it in the oven, you're baking it. And buttermilk is essentially sour milk. Um, but just because this isn't that it has that date in it, but it's not actually sour, so I'm going to add a tablespoon of vinegar to it. So to make, if you don't have buttermilk or if you don't want to buy buttermilk, to make it, you can add lemon juice and vinegar anything acidic to regular milk and that's what will turn into buttermilk so I never really buy it just in case I don't use it um, so I always have those other ingredients at hand and just give it a quick mix and then it's super easy so my dry ingredients I'm adding my milk right in there and just gonna mix it up it is the easiest spread that you will make and it's super nutritious, super filling. Um, when I'm serving this, I will serve it with like smoked salmon, just eat it with bread and jam. I have an almost two year old um, who's currently napping and she loves this just with peanut butter and jelly um, or even just by itself with soup. And as I mix it, I don't want to over mix. So just quickly make sure there's no dry flour left. And this will make two small 8 by 5 loaves, or you could do, if you don't have a smaller tins, this is the bigger one, so this is the difference. Um, so I'm going to do two small, or you could do one large. The two small typically take about 45 minutes to bake. If I do the larger tin, um, it takes about 70 minutes. So, I'm going to spray the tin with the oil, and then divide it between my two tins. So two 8 by 5 and it is that simple, that easy. Um, we'll put it in the oven and let it bake. And the reason that I like to do the two smaller loaves as opposed to the bigger one is it's just easy to freeze. Um, they're nice smaller slices also because it does bake faster. So for me, that's beneficial. So when they're in the pans, this is what they look like. So, and I lined one of my tins just because it's an older one. Um, so like I said, I'm gonna pop these in the oven and let them bake, 45 minutes. Okay, so I got those in the oven. The second thing that we're making today is, like I said, buns or I would call them queen cakes or buns growing up. They're similar to cupcakes, they're just not usually as light as cupcakes. So if you know what Madeira is, it's a Madeira mixture, so it's basically sugar and butter creamed together. Then we're going to add in some eggs and flour, some vanilla essence, and baking powder is our raisin agent. So no, no bread soda or baking soda, baking powder um, is raisin agent. And the recipe that I'm following is from a super old recipe book that's missing its cover. That's how old it is. I don't know if you can see it. It's all about home economics by Deirdre Madden. Um, and if you know anybody that went to school in Ireland, I didn't actually even use this book. It was my aunt's or my mom's or, I don't know, somebody's. Um, but it has really great basic recipes, so I still use it um, for lots and lots of recipes. So that's where the recipe for the queen cakes is coming from. Um, and also, 
I do have a converted, but I couldn't find that um, version right now, so I'm just using the recipe I always use. And I'm using my weighing scales, which you don't see much of in American kitchens, um, but I do have one. So the first thing that we are going to measure for this is 100 grams of butter or margarine, so I'm just going to use a stick for that. It's a little over 100 grams, but um, it's generally okay. Oh, that was Frankie. Excuse you, Frankie. Okay, and then I'm going to do 100 grams of sugar. So when I put on my bowl on the weighing scales, it would be X. When I put on the bowl on the weighing scales, I'm just going to hit zero to tear it or get it back to zero and measure 100 grams. Okay. Um, and the recipe calls for caster sugar, which is always used in baking in Ireland. However, um, it's not typically found in the United States. If you were looking for caster sugar specifically, you would generally get super fine sugar. So depending on what I'm making, if it's like a pavlova or something where I do want really fine sugar, I'll buy super fine sugar or run regular granulated sugar through the food processor. So for that one, um, I'm just using regular granulated sugar for this recipe. Um, there's a few ice and sugar as well. If you see confectioner's sugar in a recipe, um, or ice and sugar in an Irish recipe that you're using, it's confectioner's sugar over here. Uh, I think, oh, corn starch and corn flour. I changed those just as they are, which I'm not sure if that's fine or not, but I've never failed. So, um, right now I'm just creaming together I've got butter and sugar in here. I'm just creaming those together. And I would typically use um, a KitchenAid for this, but for today I'm just using a regular wooden spoon and bowl. I just want to get these just kind of nice and soft. It looks like a super thick cream until they're really well combined. And for this recipe, the butter is at room temperature, um, which is pretty important. So you want to make sure that your butter is at room temperature. Take it out the morning off if you're going to make these. And same thing with your eggs, actually, which for me was another thing when I moved here. I grew up on a farm. We had our own hens at the back. So if we needed eggs for bacon, if they weren't on the kitchen counter, um, we would just go grab them from outside. So when you have eggs that are kept in the fridge all the time, it is important that you take them out before, um, sorry. It is important that you take them out just before baking again in the mor at the morning of, or if you forget to, you can just put them in, um, if you get a bowl of warm water, and just leave them in the bowl of warm water for a few minutes, just to get them up to room temperature. Because it affects the aeration, um, so that was another um, issue. Oh, hey Frankie. What's up? What's up? Hey. Wanna say hi? You wanna say hi? hi? See, didn't make it up. We got Frankie here. We got Frankie. Yeah. You saying hi? Are you saying hi? Are you baking with mama? Mm. <laughs> okay, buddy. Alright. Okay, sorry. So as I was saying, um you want to take make sure your eggs are warmer warmer at least than just right out of the fridge, the room temperature. My mom was here last year and she was making I think it was a sponge cake or something. Um and she just used cold eggs from the fridge and the sponge cake didn't rise and it just didn't look great, so actually we ended up throwing the sponge cake in the trash and she couldn't figure out because she bakes all the time she doesn't even need recipes and she couldn't figure out what was wrong with her sponge cake like why you know what happened but it was the eggs and then sometimes the flour here too she, she always uses autumn flour which if you've ever been to the Irish store um it's always autumn flour so just all-purpose flour is what I use here um the plain flour but sometimes the autumn is a little bit softer or has a softer texture maybe than um the all-purpose flour, but all-purpose generally works fine for me. So I just whisked up two eggs in a bowl, and I am also going to add in a teaspoon of vanilla essence. And you can actually add in any essence, like it doesn't have to be vanilla. If you want like an orange flavor or almond, like whatever you want, you can add into the eggs, and it will work. And I need 150 grams of so plain flour, is what the recipe calls for. Right, Frankie? Can we do plain flour? Yes. Yes, we will. And... 
So traditional Irish dinners as well would be like bacon and cabbage, beef stew, shepherd's pie, all of those. But you know, you can find so many of those recipes online. So I figured this was something that was different and nice. And why not? So this is a half a teaspoon of baking powder. I'm just going to add that right into the flour. And then we are going to add these. So this is what my... Can you guys see that? Or the light? Maybe not. But it's basically like a really thick cream. So that's the butter and the sugar. So I'm going to add in my eggs and my flour. My eggs first, I'm just give it a quick mix. And I'm going to add in my flour. I usually use my kitchen. I don't know if I said that. We use my kitchen for this, or you can use a food processor. Um, and they're generally pretty hard to mess up. Get flour everywhere. And if it's dry, so depending on the eggs, if it's a little bit dry, you can add in just a splash of milk, so maybe like a tablespoon or two of milk. Um, you can add in chocolate chips, whatever you would like. And these were my mom's signature um, signature recipe. Like all of my friends would love these when they came to my house, or if we had football games, so that's Gaelic football. And if we had games on, my mom would make like trays and trays of these and take them. For St. Patrick's Day, she put in green food color in. So I'm just gonna put them in the cupcake tins and just about a dessert spoonful. So I work with two spoons and we're just putting them in like this. So this will make 10 to 12 usually. So I'm trying to think what other ingredients in relation to moving here. I did find a huge change in the quality of some foods. Um, so I try to always buy organic or grass fed, especially, you know, any meat or meat products. Um, because we're up on a farm in, you know, the northwest of Ireland, we always had those things. We knew exactly what the animals were fed and we knew where milk came from. We knew where eggs came from. So um, we never had to worry. Whereas over here, I. I did find some foods, you know, I don't want to say tasteless, but, um, you know, unless you actually go to the bother of looking for good quality ingredients, um, you know, like grass-fed beef, you only use 90% beef if you're doing shepherd's pie, that sort of thing. Um, so that was a big change for me as well, but we do get the curry gold butter. Yeah. So these are ready to go in the oven. I will bake them at 400 for about 20 minutes, but I'm going to wait for my brown bread to come out first of all. Um, so I will show you both of them when they're finished and I'll show you how these would be traditionally decorated as well um, in Ireland. That's hoping that they come out okay because as I'm chit-chatting I hope I didn't forget any ingredients. Um, so I will be back in a few. Okay, so everything is out of the oven. Um, we have our brown bread right here and we have our buns and queen cakes here. And I have Carly who is going to be my taste tester and help me decorate. Um, so traditionally in Ireland, um, buns or cupcakes, you know, they're not um, decorated with all that buttercream and the high, high buttercream or anything. It's just usually very simple. So what I've done here, I don't know if you can see the old looks just white, it's icing sugar or confectioner sugar just mixed up with water. Um, and this would just be spread across the top of these. It's pretty thick as you can see. It's just with a spoon. Yeah. Right, Carly, we'll spread it across the top. And then... Um, you would add on so sprinkles or what's called hundreds and thousands. Um, on these, so I have some sprinkles here. Will you put some sprinkles on? Yeah. Or do you want to put some smarties on? Smarties. You want to do some smarties? Do smarties in the next one? So they look just like that. Um, you could just, you know, if you were doing a lot of these as well, I would have a bigger mixture and I would just dip them in the bowl like this. It didn't really work out. Um, or you could do this with just melted chocolate as well. So it's not like extravagant buttercream, nothing crazy and rich, nice and plain and simple. Just like us Irish people. So, Carly's gonna put a button on here. Oh, sorry, it's not a button, it's a Smarty. So Smarty? So these are 
Nestle brand. So these are Irish chocolate that we just happen to have in the house. Carly, do you like Smarties? Yeah. You do? Do you want to, I'll leave those there. So you can eat them. Do you want to try one of these? Like cut it in half for you? So you just obviously let the icing dry and then it's pretty good to go. Do you want to taste this and see if it's nice? Did you already have some of these? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Carly's going to taste that for us and while she is I will just cut into the brown bread and show you what it looks like. So because of all the grains that we use, the flax, the um, oats, it does have a nice texture usually. So this is what it looks like. We cut in, you can see all the grains. Um, and I would generally just, we serve that with anything in this house. Like I said, Carly eats it with, do you like peanut butter on your brown bread? Yeah. Peanut butter and jelly? Yeah, so peanut butter and jelly or um, curry gold butter sometimes. And I just love curry gold butter with uh, smoked salmon. This is smoked salmon from Maine, but it is, yeah. will be very common back home. Smoked salmon, smoked fish, obviously, because we're an island. Um, the other thing, baked, yeah. batchers, baked beans. Do you like beans? Yeah. Yeah, so um, just baked beans or with an Irish breakfast. So we live close to Dorchester, um, Adams Village yeah. area. So we go to the butcher shop there, and that's where we get our um, everything we need for an Irish breakfast. What's your favorite thing for breakfast? Sausies. Sausies. <laughs> so Carly loves Irish sausages that we get from the butcher shop, right? <gasps> Do we go to the butcher shop for Irish sausages? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so sausage rasher, black and white pudding, um, eggs, pudding. beans, and then we would generally serve the brown bread with it, or just with butter, jam, any anything. It literally goes with anything you've eaten alone as part of a meal, and um, whatever. So that's pretty much what we made, our buns and our brown bread. But then while I was, um, while they were baking, actually I was getting them out of the oven. We were finishing up naps. I was kind of looking around the house to see what else I had that was Irish in the house. And so I found Abbey Farm, it's um, blackcurrant jam. So I have yet to see this in an American store, um, like blackcurrant jam, it's not blackberry, blackcurrants. But this was something that my grandparents would have always made when we were growing up. And it's one of my favorite types of jam. So. It's nearly gone actually that jar. Um, another thing was Bisto gravy. So it's just gravy granules for like, it's a brown gravy. Um, so for a beef usually. Um, but again, you could have this with like sausages and peas and potatoes or but anything really. It's a staple in most Irish houses. Um, and I do make these from scratch, but these are my cheats. Uh, so this is some pepper cream sauce um, that's served with steak, very popular back home as well. And this is what Carly likes to eat for breakfast, ready break. And it's basically just oats. So it's just like um, oats and oat flour. And um, we're like oatmeal, but a baby oatmeal. So that is. And then we have oxtail soup, which I use in my shepherd's pie and my stews. Again, it's just a quick handy, um, almost like a beef broth, but then it has, you know, just has more flavor. So I love that. Frankie's so fingers. Um, Frankie's sucking his fingers, yeah. Uh, and then a couple other things. I have rosary beads from Knock. We did a foley water from Knock too that Carly uh, mislaid. And we, this is a, it's pottery from a, a pottery studio in Eastkey, so in the northwest of Ireland, right in the ocean, on the wild Atlantic way. Um, and this is an oil burner. I have some cups to match it somewhere as well, but it's from Rosie's Pottery Studio in Eastkey, County Sligo. I think she may have an online store, but that we love that we use it all the time. And it was a nice gift from my sister. Um, a rosary beads from Knock. I know I have some prayers up there from Knock. A, a blessing. Um, I think just things that are in every every Irish home. Um, and then the other things that we have are a couple things from Boxford Wool and Mills. I don't know if people have heard of that. It's in County Mayo. Um, so I have about four or five baby blankets. These are the best baby blankets. I love them. You can get them online, or you can get them in the Irish stores as well in Quincy's. And another thing that you'll find in most Irish houses, can you sit down, Pat? Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Um, another thing you'll find in most Irish houses are GAA jerseys. So we have one here from a, it's a club jersey um, from Leash. Leash is a county in the Midlands, so um, it's from Camrys. And we have another one that is half Sligo, half Leash. Um, Sligo, where I'm from, Leash, where the other half of my kids are from. And then we have a Father Tom's Burke one, um, which is a club here in Boston. So I don't know if anyone is familiar with. There's the Irish Cultural Centre, which is out in Canton. I recommend checking out. Um, they have like a lot of different cultural things going on. Um, they have a little club there on Sundays. Generally, you find um, a good Irish card there for sports and whatnot. So 
There are just some other things that I feel like are in every single Irish house. Um, so we're doing a question and answer session now, or else maybe we did it as we went along, I'm not really sure, because this was pre-recorded. Um, so happy to take any questions. And then just remember to check out my website, bostonbakeology.com. I'm on Instagram and Facebook as well. Um, and if you ever feel like having a party in your house, it does not have to be Irish related, um, but generally it's pretty hands-on. So for kids' birthday parties, for dinner parties, anything, just um, give me a call or you know check out my classes. I do have some public classes. Um, and that's it for now. Thank you.